Ian, welcome back to the show, mate. Welcome, Marty. Good to be home. Are you watching any World Cup football? Let's start there. Uh, I have seen bits and pieces of it. Yeah, well, I had four days in Italy last week and saw a lot of it over there, and I've just seen highlights since I got back. But uh, a few upsets happening, haven't they? Well, this is what happens at the World Cup. Let's hope it doesn't happen next year. Halfway through the year we spoke, I gave the the, the scorecard at that stage a B-. minus. I haven't changed from a B-. minus. Have you thought about this and given the team a grade? Uh, no, I, I missed your marking, but um, thanks for the B-. minus. It's uh, Look, I, I think if I had to give it a mark, I'd... Um, you know, I think it's a little bit simplistic in many ways, but I think if you look at the first part of the year, the first five tests, the first six tests, the home series against Ireland, who at that stage were the world number ones coming to this country, they, they had two away tests to South Africa, and, you know, clearly it was a tough start. I'd give us a, you know, I think when you look at that, you'd probably give us a D, wouldn't you, in terms of, you know, we weren't, we weren't, didn't get the results that we wanted, even though... Um, uh, there was lots of things happening around the country at that particular time, so I didn't think we could got really what we wanted at that point. I think the second part of the season, the last seven tests, we were effectively gone unbeaten, and I think made some real, real good strides, changed a, a few people, found some pretty good combinations going forward. I'd, I'd probably give us a B plus. How's that? That last 10 minutes against England, you know, obviously, you know, as every fan was, sour as hell that ended in a draw. But I thought about it afterwards, and here's my theory on it. I, um, for, for Obviously, for just for what it's worth, I thought that last 10 minutes was actually good for us because what, what that said, I thought, was that, hang on a second, if we'd won that game by a few points, maybe a lot of us would have thought everything is absolutely OK. What it actually did was put a handbrake up and say, hang on a second, no, 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 press pause, there's still a hell of a lot to work on. What did it mean to you, that last 10 minutes against England? Yeah, look, firstly, it was disappointing. And it was a test that... And I think one of the reasons it was disappointing was because we we really played so well for large parts of that test. And it's... You know, and I think the highs have been high. And, and, and we, we did a whole lot of things that we were pretty excited about. We played a team that had had beat us up three years three years ago and and I felt we went in and really imposed ourselves physically on them and and, and really good did a good job. What it did show us in that last part is and it's um, is that mentally we've still got a little bit of room to grow as a group about how to finish off games and and where to go to when we're under the pressure at that at, at that tail end of the of the game. Now we we've had games this year that we've nailed that part and we've had games that we haven't and We've had some games when we've been behind and we've shown a massive intensity to come back into it and do well, but we've had a couple of situations. Melbourne was one and and Twickenham was another where we, were, we got ourselves into such a good position. We should have just shut the game out a lot better than what we did. So, so the good thing I love is that you had an English team that was, that was celebrating and we weren't, but deep down I, I know we had the game to to put a lot of points on England and and I also know that we we can fix that last 10 minutes and get that mentality right that we're in a great position going forward. Ian, the on-field leadership during that last 10 minutes and also as it unravelled in Melbourne, you've got your senior players out there, guys with all the experience. Richie Mawang has had that jersey since uh, Joe Berg. You've got Sam out there, Artie out there, TJ came on. You know, I mean, how concerning is it for you that with all of that leadership out there that we that we couldn't get a grip on those last 10 minutes? Yeah, look, I think it's... I don't think concerning is the word. It's just something that's clear. It's a, it's a couple of times that we didn't get it right. And, you know, I think it's... Um, you know, you talk about the Melbourne game and, you know, Aussie came back, but you got to remember that... That, that we still showed composure enough to score a match-winning try in that game. Everyone talks about the refereeing decision, but we actually did show composure to score a try and win that game. So, so I think Twickenham was, but Twickenham was disappointing. I thought we became individual in in that last eight or nine minutes, and I think we kind of wanted it so much. We were working hard, but we we moved away a little bit from solving problems collectively, and so. It's a, it's very high up on the list of things that we've got to 
tidy up a little bit because whilst we are working hard on that area, as we know it's a key thing for us, we know we're just not quite there yet. And uh, so big work on, but again, I think we've made good strides in that space and that last 10 minutes and the lessons from that are hopefully ones that we can we can build a, a fantastic campaign into the World Cup next year on. How you know how 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 do you how do you possibly get the players in a position though where they go through that again without actually putting them in a position in a test match where they go through that again because you can't learn that can you? No, we, you've got to learn that, and I think as a group you have to go. You have to learn that because it's. I mean, it's not like we haven't been there before, and you go back over the go back over the last. 11 or so years that I've been here, I, I used to remember sitting down with Mike Cron at the end of a year with a red wine and, and after what people were deemed as really successful years and we'd sit down and say, well, which games are we really proud of? And often there was only two or three games in a in a calendar year that you actually felt, yeah, that's, that's when we did everything right. And so when you look at test matches, each test match has moments and and spells or parts of your game that you don't quite nail to the, the degree that you want. And But, you know, we've got a team that I think is growing in composure. The, the experience of of having a really bad start to the year this year and the pressure that was applied and coming out the other side and and still playing with enough freedom and, and showing real growth, particularly in the physicality side of our game. I, I think the team has got a grown immensely in composure but the last 10 minutes shows we're still not where we really want to be yet and, and uh, having that gap going into next year I think it's going to be key for us Ian Foster is with us on the programme so I mean I call it a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde we play well against Ireland we lose to Ireland we play terrible against South Africa we beat South mm. Africa we play terrible against Argentina we beat them we, we almost blow it against Oz we thrash them Japan wasn't impressive. Wales was. Scotland wasn't. See, there's a, a pattern here. How do we get the consistency that all of those amazing performances, we do it back to back? Because that's what's got to happen in the World Cup. Yeah, that's right. And I think it's, it depends which lens you want to look at it through. And, you know, I, I think generally people are, are looking at the year through a negative lens and finding reasons to be to be critical of it. And... You know, in some ways I can't change that, but what I do know is that when you look at when you look at the year, we we effectively beat everyone we played, and and so whilst we lost the series to Ireland, we also showed that we we could smack Ireland at Eden Park, and I think that and same with South Africa, and so uh, and that's where the consistency issue comes in. It's it's the fact that we. We, we need to be able to do it better all the time and that's always been a goal for us and and so it's something that we'll keep chasing some of that's mental some of that's um, uh, some of that was us growing growing this group by having some new combinations and putting people out and having them giving them the chance to go through a, a campaign and experience the highs and lows of it and but with all those experiences in shape, I really believe that if you look at the the year we've had, the, you look at the the last seven tests and the different things that we've done in that that period, that it's a to me it's a strong launching pad into next year because we've we, we've grown immensely. I think some parts of our game, I think the physicality side, the the I think the game plan, our kicking game's got strong, our mauling game, our, our, and defending malls, which was a weakness at the start of the year, has now become a strength. And so, there's parts of our components, the parts of the game that, that I'm really enjoying the growth. I think that what you're talking about, Marty, is the it's just that mental toughness to actually nail teams when we've got the foot on the throat, and and it is something that we've got to get better at, and and that's clear. And so it's going to be a a big work on for us and starting with a couple of days when we're actually assembling the All Black squad at the end of January before they go into Super Rugby just to review the year, which is something that we haven't done, been able to do before. I've uh, got a lot of questions to ask you about some of the positional changes and, and also some of the combinations. But first, in your own mind, in your selectors' minds, with all players available, have you settled on a 15 slash 23A team that that's your side that you would love to see run out in the major matches of the World Cup? Yeah, I think we have, and 
and you know that's and we've got there in a different different ways we've got there because the last two years have, have dealt us some hands where we haven't really been able to settle down in, in, a, in, in a consistent way so we've built combination and built depth first and but I think you saw us near the, in the second half of the year really firm up some combinations it's you know it's it's a funny old game, isn't it? Like we were criticised in the rugby championship for not changing people and 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 not venturing outside a group. You know, when we lost a couple of games, and later in the year when we made some changes, it was a little bit of people a bit critical because we were we were making changes, we were winning. But we, we've had a strategy of trying to build to make sure that we've got a a squad of thirty three that we're really confident with going into a World Cup and. So do we believe we're there? I think we do. We're, we're still want to be open-minded to what's happening next year in Super Rugby. We've got some challenges to put to players about growth. and So that's why we don't want to go out categoric and say we've got our 15. But, um, you know, I think between myself and Jason and Joe, we've got a very, very clear idea about where we're heading and, um, and, uh, and are excited by that. Ian Foster's with us on the platform. You said the word criticism there. You also said the word critical. Does it bother you? Does it, you know, I mean, is it something that, that, that you're obviously aware of, but, I mean, how much does it affect you or influence you or doesn't at all? I mean, I'm just interested because you use those two words then. Well, I think it was, uh, you, you can't deny that there was a lot of pressure on, on, on the team and myself earlier in the year. I think that's been well documented. It's been... Everyone's spoken about it, and 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 we had to deal with that because it's not a, not a great place to be for a group. But I'd like to think that people um, have have got a have can recognise the the growth that we've put this team through, particularly after the start we had, and you know the fact that we've got the trophies locked away where we want. And the fact is that we've. We've, we've had you know a good end of year tour. We've 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 shown that we we can play some great rugby. We've built a bit of depth, and and yet we know that we're still not the finished product yet. And and so in many many ways, it's a it's a pretty good spot to be in, and gives us a good ability to actually create a really real good edge with our group next year. But it's from a position of confidence. It's not a position of you know, wondering where the answers are, and uh, so from from our perspective, it's it's been a year that it, it has been a mentally tough year for for the team, for management, and how we deal with with a bit of adversity. And um, but I'm really proud of the way they've they've worked their way through it. We all work our way through it, and and I believe coming out the other side, and I'm looking forward to the next the next the next year with a lot of confidence. The relationship with the media, who are just absolutely in love with the Black Ferns, don't seem to show the same love towards the All Blacks, our number one national team. Do you and the players care that much about it? Does it bother you? Does, how much does it affect you? Oh, look, it's... Um, well, I, I don't, it doesn't bother us from the perspective as, as you know, the, the relationship with the Black Ferns is, is fantastic. They, they, they've deserved it. They've come through a you know, it's been a, a really intriguing couple of years for them and to come out the other side and, you know, and I think it's hard not to love the, the World Cup, the the Women's World Cup that was here because of the, the drama, you know, when you've got when you've got a team that can get knocked out in the semi-final with a kick in the last second and the drama of the last minute of the final, it just shows you the fine margins. And, and so when you come out on the positive side of that, you, then we, so we should celebrate and get excited about it. That's what sport's about. But uh, the flip side of it is that just because you're celebrating one thing doesn't mean you need to go to go dog on the other thing. And so, you know, we've just got to be able to live together and we're different products and and people feel about the teams in different ways and, and we accept that. We expect we accept our responsibility. But, you know, I think... Um, um, but I do think that there's been enough good in this year for for people to actually finish the year with a bit of hope about where we're on the trajectory that we're on as well. 
Just one question more on this before I get into the positional things. As as a as a person, where where are you at with 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 it all? Are you happy where you just you know that okay? This is, I know you accept this as part of your job. I know that that's you 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 know what you signed up for, but at the same time, it gets rotten at times, and everyone gets affected by it. And we've spoken about this, and you've told me it's more about your family and your friends. You can deal with it, but maybe that they don't deal with it as well. Do you sit there at the at the end of the year? Do you have any bitterness about all of that? No, nah, oh, I love the job. No, nah, I'm in a privileged position, and I love the job. I love, I love being the head coach of the All Blacks. I, I've, I, I got massive regard for the people I work with, and, and, and I'm absolutely passionate about it. And, and that that overrides all. And, as long as, um, as long as the the plan we've got is. Is showing showing fruits, and then we're progressing this team, and we're we're um, we're putting ourselves in the best position to do what we want to do next year. Then then, then I'm happy, and, and the rest of it, I guess I, I get frustrated with. I feel that the lens that at times that that people look at us and, and our results and where we're at, the lens is sometimes I think blurred, where people are, are stuck in things that have happened before and won't move on, but. I can't change that, but I can. It doesn't need to get me down, and it doesn't stop me from expressing that, uh, you know, the hope that we've got and and the belief that we're on the right path. Fozzie, what has Jason Ryan and Joe Schmidt brought, not only just to the team, but to you as well? Why do you like these guys so much? Well, look, they've just come in and and done their job in in a really competent, simplistic way. They've done it. Um, done it with honesty and, and done it with skill, and that's the best I can say. You know, like it's um, it was tough circumstances for them coming in, and you know, Jason after the Irish series, and and Joe, even though he's with us as a selector, but him coming hands on after the South African series. So it's um, you know, there's it's fresh voices in the group, and, and and you get a sometimes you get a move with fresh voices, um, but. You know they've just in there for the right reasons. They, it's a coaching group that I think is really working well. I think yeah, you add in Greg Greg Feek. I think is is going really well working alongside Jason, and I think you've seen fruits of that in our scrum work, which is getting stronger and stronger. I think that Scotty McLeod is really enjoying having. Um, the ability to bounce ideas around with with Joe as well, so you just got a different, you know, you got two experienced voices coming in, and they're both good listeners. That they're, they're collaborative, and 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 the group's working really strong with that. Ian Foster with us. Positions 10, 12 and 15 in the back line. Are you happy absolutely with Richie Mawanga at ten? Is there a chance Bowden can come back? The second question is obviously about. Geordie, is he the cement at 12? And your fullback. I know I ask a lot of questions in the one question, but I just wanted to combine all three of those this time. Well, they kind of are all combined, aren't they? And it's um, and the, the answer with those questions is, yeah, I'm happy with those. I mean, I think um, Richie's grown as a 10. Um, he, I think that Bodie has, you know, gone back into 15 and played really well. I still, we still... Um, he still, we, we still want him competing for ten as well. So you're, you're still going to see that. We have to have depth in that position. So I don't kind of get the 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 black and white type approach that people take to it at the moment. We're, we're happy with having those two fighting away at ten, and but we also know that Bodie can play fifteen. But the fact is, is that when when Bodie plays fifteen, he's a massive help for Richie because he comes in as a second set of hands and second set of eyes. And I think you saw that in the English game with some of the kicking that Bodie did and he took over areas of the game that gave us the vision that we wanted for the game. So he he's a great fifteen to have if you're a ten. And and yet the week before I felt that when Bodie was 10, he wasn't given that same assistance from the people outside him. So part of the battle is is we need to make sure we do grow other midfielders in 15s that can make the sorts of decisions that Bodie does when he's playing 15. You understand that one? I do, I do. Six yeah. and seven. And Sorry, keep going. 
So there, there's a bit of a jigsaw there, but, you know, delighted with Geordie. Clearly, we love him as a 15, but, wow, he's been good at 12, and, and he's given us a very different look at 12. And, and, and again, I think it's about being open-minded enough to and adaptable enough to be to make changes late in the piece. And so we're happy with our decisions with him and, and like where he's going. Sixes and sevens? Yep, sixes got and sevens. Good, got, got some good options. I mean, I thought Dalton was outstanding on the tour. Um, and it's one of those ones where, you know, Sammy sadly had to go home after Japan with injuries and it's um, opened the door again and Dolphin just carried on doing what he's doing. I thought he was a bit slow for us at the start of the international win a series, but boy, he, uh, he played very, very well on that tour and, and really put his hand up. And so that gives us great choices there. And and I think when you look at it, sixes with again, we were, we were delighted with Scott Barrett again. He had a heck of a week with a few things happening with him. So just so his performance against England, I thought was was really strong. Um, and he's been in his form at Locks, been outstanding, so got good choices. Shannon Frizzell, I think, has been a big mover this year. And then we've got some other good options there underneath that. Okay, a couple of quick questions, and um, and we'll let you go. Is Sam still your captain? Sam Kane. Well, well, we'll work through that next year, Marty, but he's a great leader. Uh, and and But, you know, it's like everything. People have to have to demand their position on the park and Sam Kane wouldn't want it any other way. And, you know, and the same's applied with Sam Whitelock because there's some great competition at Lock now. And so it's one of those things that we've got a great leadership group. I think they're working hard together. They know that that the pressure's on on them to, to play well on the park. And so the actual captaincy of the team is something that, that we, I guess, we keep reassessing. But the guys that we're talking about, Marty, are still key leaders in the team, whether they've got the C next to their name or not. What did you say to Eddie Jones? You two had a great laugh after the end of that England game. Second to last question, what did you guys talk about? Well, we're probably trying to decide who was happiest. And um, I think he was probably, he was smiling the most and I wasn't, but I think that's on the outside. But underneath, I think he was smiling because he knew that they'd probably that we'd probably played the best rugby on the game and should have got away with the win. And, um, and I was, so, but look, Eddie's, um, he's got a tough job up there. He, funnily enough, he, he texts me and we had a dinner in South Africa before my second South African test and over there. And, and like, he knows what it's like coaching international rugby. So it was just a good chance of a bit of a yak. I want to let, uh, leave you with you. We've been on the phone for almost 25 minutes, and I thank you so much for your time again. Um, I just so I want to leave you with the last word, telling the All Black fans, talking to the All Black fans, man, what have you got to say? What, what, sorry, what would you like to say? That's a much nicer way of saying What would you like to say? Oh, look, just, uh, just thanks for for the support for the year. And, and I know it's uh, it was a... Um, it, was a it started off very rocky, and I know there's a lot of emotions out there, but... I'd like to think that you, um, you know, I just want to reassure you that the this, this squad is really, really, it's got a passion to actually go and do well at a World Cup and go and win a World Cup. And I think the the last seven tests particularly, we've shown um, massive character and desire to work hard into that space. And so we uh, there's a lot of belief in the group and... and really all we want to do next year is go out and, and launch off that, that on that trajectory and do this country proud. So um, that's why we do it. Have a great break, won't you? And look forward to catching up next year. Thank you very much again for all the time you've given us, mate. No worries, Marty. Enjoyed it. Have a good Christmas. You too. Ian Foster with us, the All Black coach.